There we go. All right. Hi, so welcome to the art auction training meeting for 2022. Our um, art auction is going to be a digital one this year held online and it um, will go live on May 13th and will be held till the following Friday. And that allows everybody to take their time and kind of look at the flyer and be able to see what the projects are. And um, I will kind of show you a sample of what that will look like. And um, just in case you have any questions, but for the most part, we'll have lots of flyers that go out beforehand and you won't have to worry about any of that information. We want you to be able to focus on over the next couple of months, getting your project done. And that's what this training meeting is for. It, will help you understand how projects are done on a class basis and some of those tips and tricks that you can do to help finish your project and make it one that's successful. All of the projects we're asking them that they get turned in by April 28th. And the reason for that is because I take those projects and I make photo prints of them. And so if you have a parent that bids on an auction piece but doesn't get the actual final project, they still have an opportunity to walk away with an 8x10 print or you know a photo frame or something like that. And those um, projects then get or the prints get sent out. Um, uh, typically I, I have to order them. I usually go through Costco and it takes about a week or two to get those in and divvied up and passed out to the teachers who will send them home with the kids. So our projects, we're trying, because we're trying to make prints, we're trying to also not have them be three-dimensional. So we've had in the past, sometimes somebody will take like an end table or a lamp and they'll have the kids decorate it. And it's a really awesome project, but then whoever gets that lamp or the end table, that's kind of it. That, only one person gets it. So we started doing or encouraging the 2D projects so that they can have prints made of them. And I can get really, I'm really good at Photoshop and being able to make the prints look good. So your, your project does not have to be a certain dimension. With that being said, we provide um, 16 by 20 blank canvases, and there's a whole bunch of these in the closet right now, and you can just go and, and take one. And we supply those, but you are more than welcome to go and pick up, say, a frame that you might see at Goodwill or something like that, that you think you can incorporate into your project. Goodwill is fantastic for finding great frames. I've spray painted frames before. I've used frame frames as is. Shadow boxes um, where you can do kind of a 3D. We had origami frogs one year where each child made an origami frog and then it was placed in what looked like a pond and then put in a, a shadow box. It looked like it was maybe one of those Ikea ones and it turned out beautiful and you can still make prints of those. So it is okay if you have things come off the ca canvas. Um, so we will reimburse um, this year to $11 per class. So if you need to buy any supplies, like I said, those photo frames, keep the receipts, just reach out to me and let me know. And I will make sure you get reimbursed for those supplies that you had to purchase. And then as far as what materials to use on the canvas, Acrylic paint is the best way to make sure that the art lasts a really long time. The colors are vibrant, they're permanent. The temper paints that we have when you open those cabinets that are on that left hand side, those are the temper paint. And that will not last as long. The colors will be a little bit more matte as well than the acrylic paint, which will be permanent. So we are working with acrylic paint when we're doing the canvas because it will, the temper paint will crack. And because we're working with the permanent acrylic paint, 
we need to make sure that the kids aren't getting it on their clothes. So whether that's an old t-shirt that you bring in to throw over their outfit or um, a creative way to prevent the kids from getting stuff on their clothes um, goes a long way, especially with the teachers. Uh, they appreciate not having to explain to teacher or parents. You can let the teacher know that um, to maybe send out an email to the teachers, letting them know they're going to be doing a project and maybe not wear your best outfit that day to school or have something that they can throw over, uh, cover up that maybe a hoodie that they don't really care about. And that way the child doesn't get stuff on their clothes. So when your project is complete, you will turn it into the art closet. And I ask that you then email me, just shoot me an email and say, hey, my project's in the, the classroom. When you turn it into, or excuse me, the closet. When you turn it into the closet, I ask that you put your name, your teacher's name on the back, as well as if the kids have named the project. And that way it, um, when the paintings have names, <laughs> then it allows us to be able to advertise the name. And sometimes I've seen, you know, a name of a piece of artwork actually sell the artwork. And with the teacher's name on the back, I know whose it is. Towards the end, we get a lot of projects being turned in. And if there's not a name on there, I don't know whose class it goes to. And so it makes it a little bit different, difficult to hunt down and figure out where those came from. All right, so we've got a few resources for you to try and figure out projects. I'm a huge resource. Feel free to shoot me an email with you know, a photo or saying I'm thinking about doing this. How would you attach it? Maybe what would you do? And so these were just our Pinterest page here that you see has a whole bunch of ideas. And that's on that PDF that I sent out that had that little heart there. And I'm just going to take this first one here with the circle. So you could paint that circle and then draw the lines and then have each child come by and do a different design in each one of those squiggly. Maybe with this class, let's say there are 22 um, students, you could have each student do two. So they have lots of different lines to create this particular piece of artwork. And you could have the students come out and maybe two or three and just kind of gather around the artwork, maybe one on each side, and then they can work in their section. And when they're done, then they can go into the classroom and tag, or if you're working in the classroom at a table, have them go and tag the next friend to come and do their artwork. Towards the end, if you're doing it that way, you might have to stand up and say who hasn't had a chance to come and work on the, the piece of artwork. And so while we have, uh, I will arrange with the teacher and let them know how I'm planning on doing the art lesson or the art project. So this particular one with the circle, I would suggest having the kids come in groups to work on it. And you can let the teacher know, do you have a project that you like them to work on, maybe free time, or you can supply the kids with a piece of paper to work on trying to figure out what their design is. So when they come to do their design, they know exactly what they're doing. So there are ways to kind of work around whether you're doing a group or let's say you're doing this one right here and you hand a piece of paper to each of the kids, maybe a watercolor paper, and you have them do their heart designs, and you have already pre-painted the back side of the canvas with all these colors that you see. And then when the kids finish their hearts, then all you do is you just mosh podge the hearts onto the canvas and um, that way each child is at their desk working on their own project that then gets collaborated and you can either assemble it at home or you can come have them place those hearts where they would like them to be and glue them right there. Maj Paj is a fantastic way to get uh, little pieces of paper, 
like the origami frogs or the watercolor hearts we were just talking about to get them to stick to that canvas. And I will take the canvases and I actually have spray adhesive or a sealant that I will seal all the projects with when possible. Now I didn't seal that origami frog um, project that I'm talking about, but either one of these projects, if they show up to me, I'll hit them up with some of that sealant, which is a really nice artistic sealant for artists that it's waterproofs everything, but it doesn't damage the artwork in any way. So we have all of these different ideas and all of these are ones that you could easily incorporate somehow into the class. Like this one right here with the little birds, you could actually give the students a little piece of um, already cut out bird and they just decorate that bird and then you Mosh Podge it to the canvas and they can draw the little line legs. Super simple, um, very easy to do. Some of these other ones are going to be a little bit more detailed. This cat one actually came from a foam wallpaper that I saw, but I was like, that's such a cute idea. Everybody makes a cat and then you just stack them on top of each other on the canvas or I keep saying canvas, but you can do in a screen. Um, so I'm going to pause right there and see if there are any questions about what we've talked about. And I'm going to grab something real quick. <coughs> so we've got different levels of these art projects that you are seeing. And not only do we have the Pinterest ideas, but we also have that Google Drive. And you can go and see the past art projects for the past couple years and other project ideas. And so these are just ones that we've seen done at Lake Wilderness at some point over the you know number of years. Here's a great one, which is in a frame with the little, they did fingerprint flowers. And that was just the, each child got to do some sort of flower. And then this was another one um, where each child got to pick a section of the overlapping art to decorate. So we've got those two fantastic resources with lots of project ideas. And we do have, um, you'll notice that a lot of these projects, some are definitely geared for younger kids where it's super easy to come in and do some sort of little finger painting like the, these lavender blossoms. That would be something that you could draw, you know, finish the background and then draw some stalks of grass and then have the kids come and do clusters of the lavender flowers and do one each. And then, that would be great for a younger grade level where some of these more detailed ones can be for the older kids. Now we even have some preschool classes. So if you have a preschool class, I wanted to show what I just did in a class recently. I handed them a blank dowel, wooden dowel, and then, can you guys see me okay? I look like I'm pretty small. Let's see here. There we go. All right. So just a wooden dowel here. And I I just held it for each one of the kids. And this was actually a um, pre-kindergarten class that had special needs. So I held the dowel for them. And then one of the paras helped them hold the paintbrush and pick colors. And they just painted on the dowel. And this is what, it, that was my, this was my example, but then I put it all together and that's just felt. This is just felt that I cut a little notch in and then wove it through. And so this, it's now been glued to this mat and this will go into a photo box frame. But you can see that it's got a little bit of a, a pop out from the actual piece of artwork. And so each kid got to do 
their own stick and it was an easy way for everybody to incorporate very low mess. Another really low mess thing that I just got done with a preschool was I had each kid come by and they put a little drop of paint on the canvas and then I just laid a piece of wax paper over the top and I held on to it while the teacher drug the wax paper and it's going to eventually be northern lights and I'm just going to draw a few black mountains down here just the silhouette of black mountains so the kids have done the northern lights but they have you know a finished piece that they got to do we would like to have the majority of the project done by the students we understand that sometimes that's not always possible when you have uh, kids that are not as artistic or they have special needs but we still like to ask that for the most part, the project is done um, by the students. Um, this one that, this one that was done with the Northern Lights, the only part that I did is I spray painted it black. So it had a, a black foundation to start on. They did the rest and then I'll just do the black mountains down here. Oh, does, the, does the Mod Podge work with oil pastels? Um, that's actually a really good question. I have never done that before. I would recommend that if you're doing oil pastels that we you leave them as is and you put them behind a frame of some sort, maybe where the glass doesn't touch the oil pastel, <laughs> the, the final piece. Does anybody have any experience with oil pastel and Maj Paj? I've never thought about combining the two. Um, yeah, I might play around with that and get back to you on that. Uh, maybe post in the comments of the YouTube video or within the description so we have the answer to that. That's a great question. I, yeah. Are there any other questions? All right, so going back to this document, this is the one that was shared with all the docents and actually it was shared with the teachers so that they could kind of see what was being presented this year. And this has those links to that Pinterest page as well as the Google Drive. And then it has a few examples of simple projects. This one was done where there was just a simple heart drawn, uh, you know, traced in a pencil, and then each child came along and did the brush strokes, and they just kept tagging each other and getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and so they got to choose and contribute to that one brush stroke to the canvas. It was very simple, very fast. Um, I like to bring cardboard or some sort of something or another to throw like a sheet onto the floor or the table if they're working with the acrylics and that way it doesn't transfer onto tables or the floor outside. And then if you keep scrolling down the document, there you can see our little frogs, super cute. And you'll notice that a number of these, if you look closely like the bumblebee wings right here on the bee kind, they're little pieces of wax paper that, again, a little bit of Maj Paj and stuck to the canvas and it made it, gave it that 3D element, but it still allowed it to be um, a print made of it, which worked out really great. So you can see all, these are the actual prints. And so what would happen is these would then be links and you could click on it and it would take you to the bidding sheet, which would show, you know, who's bid at what time and you can just enter in your bid. It's really a neat way to do it. And then at the end of the, the auction, I just lock everything and I will email the winners so that they know. And I, I email the winners and I also then email a link to buy the prints for those parents who didn't win the bidding so that they can order the print. Now you do not have to bid on the piece to order a print. Anybody could order a print. I know if I bought every art auction piece 
that my children made, it would end up, I, I would, wouldn't have any room left on my walls in my house and they would just be lining the floors. Um, so it's a really great way to buy a print and still have your kids artwork that can go in a folder that maybe you give them later on. Um, but you can order prints at any time. Yeah. Here's another really great one with for younger kids where each fingerprint represented, each color of fingerprint represented um, a different child. And then on the side of the artwork, this was really cool. Okay, so then on the side of the artwork, right, they turned it to the side and they have the child do fingerprints on the side and then they wrote the child's name next to it. So, you know, Jimmy put his fingerprint and then wrote, they wrote their name and Susie put her fingerprint and then they wrote Susie's name. And it, it was really cute because you kind of got this, um, as you walked around the, the piece of artwork, you saw the main part and then you saw all the children's names on either side of that piece. So I do want to just real fast touch on um, this. In years past, we have done a art walk, which is where the docents decorate the boards and it's very art gallery-like with the student's name of a piece of artwork that they had made at some point, usually the, the month prior. And it's part of the celebration of learning and it's a big night where all the parents come. Sometimes it's paired with like a massive gift bag raffle or the science, one year it was the science fair, the book fair is going on. And normally it's this big massive event that happens at the end of the year, typically around May. And we're just not able to do that this year. So we've cut out the art walk boards for this year, but you will see that on the Google Drive and ideas for it. And I just wanted to make sure that I covered that and let you guys know that we're not doing that this year, but it is there and you can look at it and see how fun the boards have been in the past. Um, yeah, I think that is about it. I, I guess, are there any questions? of things. I know I moved really fast. I want to make sure everybody is able to get on with their evening, but I want to also make sure that we answer questions. All right. Great question. So with the art pieces that don't get purchased, I last year we had a few and I actually just donated them to the library to be displayed in the cabinets. There was, for the most part, they are, um, you're welcome, thank you. For the most part, the pieces sell. They, um, I, last year, or the last year that we did it, right as COVID uh, hit, we were in the middle and we only had maybe 10 projects that we sold and everybody was just, it was a bad time. And so we did have a few projects not sell and that's when I donated them to the library. But in every year past, we've had them sell and teachers will buy them and they'll hang them in their classrooms. We have had parents buy the pieces for the teach teachers and donate them. Um, we ha even had uh, pieces that were bought for people within the community or companies within the community, and then they were donated to the, the company. So we have a lot of different ways. Those projects don't go to waste in any way. Um, we wanna make sure that those projects are enjoyed by everybody and they get rotated out within the school if they don't get purchased. Great question. Are there any others? Well, I appreciate everybody being here this evening. And I thank you, thank you, thank you. I, I am so appreciative of all the work that you guys have been doing this year. I know it has been a, a very different year and hopefully we'll just be able to pick back up where we left off next year and make it even better. And if you have any <clears throat> questions about the art projects or struggling with even the little tiny things that, um, Maybe you're just having a difficult time getting something to stick to a canvas with Maj Paj. I've worked with many docents to overcome little things like that. And sometimes 
it's just a matter of a new idea. Um, sometimes I don't have the answer and I'll think about it and then get back with you and snowball some ideas around. But I've even seen somebody where their pieces weren't sticking to the canvas. They ended up being done on cardstock. It was just too heavy and it kept falling off. And she simply just used a sewing needle um, to sew it to the canvas. And it ended up giving it that extra depth um, that just make that, made that piece even more elevated. It was really neat. Well, I will say good night if there aren't any other questions. I will throw this up, back up for just a little bit. Let's see where I go. You can see our works in progress here and how you can make a project that is easy for everybody to contribute to. All right, thank you so much. I hope you guys have a fantastic evening. Feel free to email me if you figure out any other questions and I am here for you always. Thanks so much, have a great evening.